Okay, Riot put out a trailer for Aurelian Souls Champion Update called Finality today. And it's actually like a pretty good trailer as far as lore goes. It doesn't like really give us anything new, but it presents a good opportunity for me to talk about Aurelian Soul. So I'm gonna do that. If you're already a lore aficionado, there's not really gonna be like much new information here for you, but you could stick around to like hear the sound of my voice and maybe I'll speculate at the end. Probably, I'll probably speculate at the end. If you can, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. It helps the channel a ton. I don't really care what you comment. You can comment papaya for all I care. Just like something down there is cool. You can also hit the bell if you want. You'll get notifications when I post new stuff. That's cool too. Maybe you tell a friend. I, I don't know. Let's watch the video. Before me, existence was empty. Barren. By my will, I Okay, we'll pause there. So, like, this is pretty straightforward, right? Aurelian Soul, along with others like him, existed at the dawn of creation, and they themselves roamed the cosmos and filled it with all kinds of stuff. Aurelian Soul, in particular, was big on stars and suns and what have you, so he filled the cosmos with that stuff in particular. He's effectively responsible for, like, creating the light in the universe, honestly. Mortals strive to construct their own adorably inadequate marvel. But true power is only found in the cosmos. Okay, so this shot here, this shot here, this is a pretty important shot uh, to understand some stuff about Aurelian Soul, but first we sort of have to do like a history lesson. Aurelian Soul and his kin aren't the only celestial beings in the cosmos. Another type, and one that's particularly active on Runeterra, are the celestial aspects. They select aspect hosts to represent and, you know, be the conduits of their power on Runeterra. That's people like Leona and Diana and Pantheon and Zoe and other celestial aspect hosts exist as well. When Aurelian Soul was creating the cosmos, he didn't like really view the aspects as equals. He didn't really feel like they contributed uh, necessarily to creation as a whole, at least in his eyes. So one day Aurelian Soul is like flying around the cosmos and he sees that there's a world orbiting one of his sons, Runeterra in this instance. And he gets closer and he also notices that the aspects are really invested in Runeterra and the aspects are like, come check out this world real quick. And he's like, all right, they kind of like flatter him a little bit and he flies on down. And when he gets down to Runeterra, he's presented as sort of like the giver of the sun to the land. They create an offering for him in the form of a crown which he accepts but it turns out that that's not actually like a nice crown it's a deceptive crown and this crown basically like imprisons him and shackles him and it seems to like siphon a bunch of knowledge about the sun and the creation of the stars and what have you out of him and to people on Runeterra and then after they get that knowledge they throw him back out into the cosmos and back off of Runeterra and he actually like can't get back to Runeterra once he's out there Using the knowledge that they gained from Aurelian Soul, the Aspects and Runeterran mortals work together to create the first Sun Disk, which is the device pictured in this shot, and is what gave the Shreeman Empire the ability to create the Ascended God Warriors that functionally brought them to power. Not just Shreema, Ishtal had God Warriors too and whatever, but not important. So the voice line here is him kind of talking down and talking smack about the Sun Disk and also the powers of the era, uh, really trying to like emulate his own power and not doing a particularly good job of it it being kind of like a weak impersonation of his own power the irony of him flexing all of this while he's like still trapped by a crown made by these people is not lost on me but let's go on you thought you could wield it as you could tame me but how do you tame greatness Oh, that's right, you can't! Okay, so this shot's kind of funny. Right here, this shot. This is Aurelian Soul fighting Zoe. Zoe, who is the current aspect of Twilight. One of the aforementioned aspects of Runeterra that, you know, imprisoned Aurelian Soul. Zoe wouldn't have actually been the aspect at that time. It would have been somebody else, but that's irrelevant right now. The line, you thought you could wield it, you thought you could tame me, is sort of like directly applicable to Zoe as an aspect in that instance, right? It's directed to her and her kin. Funnily enough, though, at least as we understand it, Zoe and Aurelian Soul don't have like a necessarily hostile relationship it was specifically likened to being like thor and loki from like norse mythology aurelian soul knows that he can't trust zoe but they're not like outright enemies 
But regardless of that, Aurelian Soul has like active disdain for the aspects in general. I mean, who wouldn't they imprisoned him? It's also important to note that Aurelian Soul, like I mentioned, is like pretty egotistical, right? So some of that disdain is obviously from being imprisoned, but there's also got to be a lot of negative energy in his mind from being frustrated that these beings that he saw as inarguably lesser than him uh, tricked him into getting captured. The aspects are sort of just like living in his head rent free. With every crack, your whole weak Every fracture brings a galaxy of strength, and while I long to return to my stars, first I shall be unleashed. Something I forgot to mention earlier is that the crown that imprisons Aurelian Soul, it didn't just like fling him away from Runeterra and suck knowledge out of him, it also kept him away from his other creations and stars as well. They talk about it in his bio, they literally say that stars are fading away from lack of care and maintenance, but he can't go fix them because he's shackled thanks to the crown. So this is basically him going like, I need to go fix my babies, but first I'm going to lay down the law real quick. There's a line here, every fracture brings a galaxy of strength, and I think this line is probably just him like waxing poetic and metaphorical, because it's kind of just how he talks. But if you look at his kit, and even like how he does damage, right, it's all based on stars and the cosmos, and in the story... Twin Dawns, Aurelian Soul, after being called by the former aspect host of Pantheon, the aspect of war, he literally just like spontaneously creates three tiny stars and flings them down to a void rift to try and seal it. So there's an implication to this line somewhat that the crown isn't just limiting his ability to like travel or to visit his cosmos, it's actually interfering with his ability to draw on that power. And as that imprisonment weakens, he gains the ability to draw on these galaxies and become stronger we know his connection is strong regardless he literally feels the death of the star in the same story all that seems obvious as i like say it out loud but it's just it's something to think about it's something to keep in the back of your head i don't know i'm just talking okay last line coming up here what's the matter targon losing your grip okay that's like far and away the most interesting line if not all that surprising in the same story I just mentioned, Twin Peaks, Aurelian Soul, he's narrating that story, talks about Targon's hold on him and how it seems to be weakening. The former aspect of Pantheon that calls him down, she has to order Aurelian Soul a few times to seal the rift, which isn't typical of when they call on him. Usually he follows their orders. And at one point in that story, he literally says that Pantheon is actively confused as she struggles to grab hold of my immaterial reins. Targon is distracted and does not sense its magic faintly ebbing from my bonds. And then it goes on to talk about the fact that the aspects are troubled by the fact that Pantheon is then killed when Soul calls down the stars to seal the Void Rift because they, in a moment, lost their complete control of Aurelian Soul. So this line is like a direct reference to them slowly losing their ability to control their dragon weapon. Now, this story takes place a while ago, timeline-wise. And it's not entirely clear when this cinematics narration is meant to take place, if it like even really was thought to have a place in the timeline at all. However, we're at the end of the video, and now you've learned a nice little amount about Aurelian Soul. So allow me some rampant speculation. Let's move back in the video a bit. Right here. Nope. Here. Nope. Nope. Here. This is what we want. This sun disk, pictured as Aurelian Soul flies across the sky, uh, doesn't look under construction, right? It looks fully formed, and we know the second sun disk is under construction when Twin Peaks is happening because he talks about it. Additionally, the like spires you see on the sides of the sun disk, and also the water that you can see pouring out of the middle, uh, those are both consistent with the new sun disk, not the old one. Which leads me to believe that this narration is probably happening closer to present day-ish Runeterra. And that means that if Targon's grip has been weakening on Aurelian Soul since that story, we may be getting close to a point where Aurelian Soul is able to wrench himself free of Targon's control and exact the revenge that he's been prepping on the aspects. And not just on the aspects, but probably also on the world that they hold so dear. And like a full-powered Aurelian Soul with a mind bent on vengeance, like this guy created all of the stars in the cosmos, ostensibly, right? That's one of the, like, the biggest threats Runeterra could face. That's a void-level threat. But then it's like, what if he doesn't even have to break free? 
Aurelian Soul at full blast might be the closest thing we have to like a tactical anti-void cannon. It's literally why the Aspects use him to seal the Void Rifts that come up. And we know the bonds on him are already weakening. So if the Void threat got bad enough, whether that's from the Watchers being freed in the Frail Yord, or Belveth just amasses enough power, Aurelian Soul might be able to convince somebody to willingly free him in order to fight back against the Void. And it's from a now archived forum post, but there was a reference that said that Zoe might actually be the key to Aurelian Soul being able to break his bonds once he learned some stuff that he had to learn. That might be like close to a verbatim quote. So what if the Void threat gets so bad and his bonds are already so weak that he just convinces Zoe, tricks the trickster, into doing something that allows him to finally break free. He takes down the Void because the Void are a threat to all of existence, not just Runeterra in particular. And then he comes for Runeterra itself. I don't know, it's speculation. It's just something to think about. It's cool. I like cosmic stories. It's cool. That's my breakdown. Let me know in the comments what you learned, what you like, what I said that you hate, all that and more down below. Okay.